cults instead of mainstream religions. People are looking for God in all the wrong places. Uh, people are spiritually hungry and they feel like Christianity has failed them. So we've replaced God's enduring word with a UFO or an extraterrestrial that's going to tell us what a new paradigm of truth is. And if you look, for example, at the Unarius Academy, what is the new construct of truth? You'll find whole civilizations, they have mastered their life. All too many people have uncritically bought into the story, not because the evidence is there, but they want to believe it's true. Some experts do see differences between the Unarians and other UFO cults. When you first look at Unarius, you wonder why would people stay? It's just a little UFO thing. But there's a very substantial theology that basically draw from traditional occult and Eastern theology that uh, it really holds people. All of this is, um, is trying to recover a sense of cosmic connectedness rather than of alienation. That, uh, the idea that we humans are some kind of oddball that's uh, stuck here in the midst of an inert cosmos. We're going to have an apocalyptic event. We're going to have a convergence of spacecraft from various galaxies around the universe. And they're going to bring us some new esoteric revelation. And through that, we're going to have a utopian society where everything is pristine and perfect. And of course, as uh, P.T. Barnum said, there's a sucker born every minute. What are those? Next, a retired Methodist minister also celebrates UFOs and claims biblical proof of their existence. Like the Unarians, he sees magnificent changes in the future for mankind. The Space Brothers were a no-show in 2001. Unarius students believe that the landing will happen when the majority of Earth's people become open to the idea of contact with interplanetary beings. In the mountains of Sedona, Arizona, Milton Notdurft, an 85-year-old retired Methodist pastor, embraces traditional Christian beliefs, as well as ideas shared by many UFO cults. Reverend Notdurft's awakening came when he saw what he believed were UFOs in the skies just outside New York City. We saw a UFO, well, it looked like a radio radio tower or something so I paid no attention drove right on by about three four miles down the road there was another one there were finally four of them blinking green and orange and red and white and I thought well they must be putting on a show for me so that that was my introduction physically though Reverend Note Durft believes in UFOs he found mainstream clergy and churchgoers don't share his views. He discovered this when he talked about his UFO experiences with his congregation. I don't talk about them in sermons. I did once, and that was a mistake, because I thought this was going to change the world in a week or two. It didn't, no matter how interesting or frightening they may be. Things change slowly. After the UFO sighting, Reverend Note Durft began a spiritual search for clues that might acknowledge the existence of what he witnessed. He believes the Bible has many passages which document extraterrestrial life. Note Durft cites the Star of Bethlehem, which led the wise men to Jesus of Nazareth. And the Bible tells us that the star that they had seen went before them until it came and stood over the place where the young child was. Comets don't act like that. Planets don't act like that. Asteroids don't act like that. It has to be something else. Milton Note Durft is also a believer in reincarnation. This age-old belief is shared by some Buddhists, Hindus, Native Americans, and many UFO cults. Note Durft claims reincarnation explains many of life's mysteries. That was not a part of my Christian belief at all. People say, 
I don't want to go through this life again. I've had enough of it. That isn't the point. It isn't this life you're going through again. It's a new one that is going to teach you some different things than the last one did. Note Durft predicts that a shift in planets will bring changes with the new millennium. The acceptance of UFOs would mean a new way of life on Earth. The first thing that will be affected is economics. If we can get free energy for all time to come, what will happen to your electric stock? Secondly is religion. And if you think religion hasn't separated us, just think of the thousands of denominations and cults that there are in the world. So obviously something's wrong with our ideas of religion. Has mainstream religion ever acknowledged the possibility of UFOs? So I would say from a Christian standpoint that the Bible doesn't preclude the possibility of UFOs. Science doesn't preclude the possibility of UFOs. I would just say that there's no real tangible evidence for them. So I think that many people believe what they believe because they want to believe it. UFOs reflect a deep human need to connect with the heavens, a spiritual quest expressed in ancient text, Greek mythology, and now in modern science fiction. I think that um, one could understand UFOs religiously in the term that Carl Jung, the great uh, psychologist, used, that they function as technological angels in a technological society. So what this is saying is that um, the same kind of entities that we might once have thought of as like angels, gods, and so on, coming down from heaven in a supernatural way, now come in spaceships. Throughout history, man has looked to space and the stars for answers. Could it be that the heavens offer an order and harmony that our unstable world lacks? We associate that uh, which is in the heavens with uh, uh, ultimate meanings in life or powers over us and, and this sort of thing. So uh, something like a bright comet, like Comet hale -Bopp, it just seems to be human nature that we try to make it more than a 25-mile across rock that's throwing out a 15-million-mile tail that's very beautiful and gorgeous in itself, but we, we want to try to make more than that. All of us, we look up at the stars at night. The very building blocks of who we are came from the stars. We may have this nostalgia for the stars on one level of consciousness because we know we did literally come from the stars. And all cultures through all time have looked at the stars and felt that either the stars were benevolent beings or they were angels. It is part of the human transcendental experience to look up at the sky and to feel that oneness with the universe. And most of the groups, in my opinion, UFO groups, are doing exactly that. They are experiencing a sense of oneness with the cosmos. As UFO cults look to the stars for a spiritual connection with the cosmos, the question remains, is there life out there, and will we ever make contact? Ten riveting films. Ten award-winning filmmakers. One unprecedented event. Ten days that unexpectedly changed America. All this week at 9, only on the History Channel.